All right, hello and welcome. This is Andy here from bullwaves.org. This is the homepage, the home of Daily Elliott Wave Analysis. Uh, I wish I could even say that without tripping over my tongue. Um, you guys who are used to this, uh, you already know where I reside. Those of you who are new, this is bullwaves.org. And uh, if you're interested in nightly Elliott Wave Analysis, then go on over to the website and check out what we have to offer. Okay, let's get into the uh, video for this week. Um, as always, I'm going to go through the, well, every market that I follow anyway. Um, I'm going to go through it from an LA wave perspective, a little bit of technical in there as well. And uh, we'll just see where we stand after another week of interesting action. Okay, this is the daily chart for Euro dollar. I know a lot of people actually just skip over this uh, and they go straight to gold or straight to the Dow. But what's happening in the dollar is quite interesting. So stick around. Um, I've been tracking this long term contracting triangle in a B wave. This is the daily chart. I've been tracking this for a long, long time. This, you know, probably going on five years now. So, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, just got the old plague. Uh, okay. So this, you can see, you know, as as we go forward, the range continues to contract. We, you know, uh, as each step of this um, this pattern continues it seems we just get more and more confirmation that that's exactly what's happening a b wave a triangle so what are we expecting we had been looking for this wave c of d low for a while and we got confirmation this week pretty much um we got a nice spike higher to retrace the previous decline and we now have uh wave a of e in place so let's get down into the uh not much to tell you here uh go to the hourly count <clears throat> Hourly count, out of the daily count. So here is wave A of E. That's uh, wave A should be um, the initial move up in a three wave pattern higher in wave E. So we'll be expecting wave A, B, and C up. And initially, you know, here's where I stand right now. Um, I'm questioning whether we have a three wave pattern high higher in wave A, or whether we have uh, you know a straightforward standard five wave uh, pattern higher. I think either way. We should probably get one more um, rally in uh, euro dollar to complete uh, either wave C of A or wave five of. A. It depends on how that's gonna. In the short term, it, it kind of, or in the long term, it doesn't really matter. I mean, it, I think we've turned the corner anyway up into wave E, so I think we're up for this part of the cycle anyway for another month or so, maybe maybe a little bit more. It'll be a choppy pattern, though. It'll be three ways up, so we're going to have a pretty significant retracement in the middle of this. Once we get wave A out of the way, we're going to fall, you know, quite, you know, probably quite precipitously back into wave B again. So we'll probably end up back around 113 or 114 again once we get up to about 116 to complete wave A. Um, anyway, it looks like this week we've 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 done nothing but go sideways. Um, pretty corrective. I think we're working in wave B. I don't know whether. We're finished that yet, or what do we have? Well, it probably looks like we're going to get one more dip, complete wave C of B. I wasn't, um, I wasn't very happy with the the previous low here uh, yesterday, but we did get quite a you know a rapid acceleration out of that low. So uh, at the moment, it's a very complex pattern. It's it's a probably a complex flat, expanded flat actually. So three waves down in A expanded flat wave B and then five waves down in wave C so we're close we're close to completing wave C of B whether we're done now or not I don't know um, but once we get an, another uh, a spike off this eventual wave B low that will signal that wave C is underway and as you can see I'm looking for five wave, wave C and we'll see how that goes so that is the plan for next week we'll see you know that you have a plan we'll just see what it actually transpires in the world. That's up to God. Okay, let's move on. Here is the daily count for uh, cable. I have pretty much um, switched to uh, this particular this count in the red boxes here at this point. So it was previously the alternate count. Now it's actually the operating count. Um, the rally that we had this week just doesn't seem to fit with what I was... Um, what I was contemplating previously. So uh, again, it seems like cable and euro dollar will start to move in um, in unison again. 
So overall, we're still looking for a five wave pattern higher to complete wave B, and that would be wave C of B. Let's get rid of these guys here. So five wave patterns, uh, five wave pattern higher to complete wave C of B. And now it looks like that we're working on a one two pattern off the low. So we'll see how that goes next week. You'll go down the hourly count here. You can see that wave one high uh, back in the middle of January. We've got five waves down in wave A. I couldn't count this all as wave two, really. Um, it's just too good as a five wave pattern. It's not, it doesn't, it doesn't subdivide well into a three wave pattern. So we've got five down in A. It looks like we've got three up in B pretty much done. Um, we'll know early next week whether wave B needs another pop to the upside before turning to wave C, but it looks like we'll, we'll decline again in wave C, five waves down again, um, wave C of two, and the minimum target would be uh, 133.58. Uh, so that's three waves down into wave two, and then we will see. Um, we will see about turning up into a third wave, uh, which could be quite powerful. Um, so, like I said, it's the what's happening in the dollar is interesting. Um, it's not going to die. The dollar is not dying. In fact, I think it'll probably again become the dominant currency over the next few years uh, if you know the world turns into a chaotic fury, as I expect. Um, initial target for uh, wave C of two for cable one thirty three fifty eight. We 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 have wave A and wave C reaching equality down around one thirty two fifty six. So we'll see how that goes over the next few days. Um, the uh, daily count in dollar yen, let's get you back into frame. Here is the daily count in dollar yen. So it looks like we're, we may be, we may be complete wave four. It's a tough call. It's quite a small wave four. You know, usually you would expect uh, something a little bit more expansive for a fourth wave, even, you know, a long kind of drawn out sideways pattern would be more in fitting for uh, fitting for a fourth wave but for the moment we may have a, a possible candidate for wave four in place um and now we're working higher into wave five so let's let's see how that goes over the next um uh let's, it's gonna it's gonna take a few weeks for wave five to go up uh, we're going to need confirmation next week that wave four is actually done you can see here on the hourly count three waves down possibly into wave four um, the reason I'm, I'm switching to that shorter wave four uh, is because we got a breakout above the previous three wave corrective high. So we had a nice three wave pattern higher and a nice impulse of move down. Didn't transpire uh, for us, uh, for me that time. Um, it looks like we could have uh, three waves down in wave four, maybe a one, two pattern. You can see uh, a possible A, B, C unfolding here. Uh, again, we'll probably know early next week whether this one fits or not. Uh, and if we do get a break below, uh, let's say that critical low is 113.47 or 48, yeah, call it 48, 113.48 um, at the wave four low. If we break that, then obviously we've, uh, we have, let's say, uh, expanded into a larger corrective pattern for wave four. At the moment, I'm happy to just kind of allow this short-term correction to take place in wave two and look for a wave three, probably later on next week, if that happens. Uh, okay, let's move on. Here is the daily count for the Dow. Now, I know, I know, I know that the world and its mother wants this rally to continue. And I've been told over and over and over again that the rally is just going to continue. And all it is is a correction, and don't worry, you know, all of it, don't worry. <laughs> I would worry if the market kept rallying, to be quite honest. Um, we have hit an interesting uh, point over the last month or so. It's where uh, the decline in, in 2020, March 2020, um, if you take 100% of that decline and extend it off the low, and then you come up with a price target of uh, 36,600, and we just pipped above that, and then we crashed. Uh, well, you could call it, let's say, a, at least a stumble, if not a crash. Now, the question here is, is this a 1-2 pattern? And if it's a 1-2 pattern, are we complete wave 2? And if we're complete wave 2, when's wave 3 going to come? 
I would expect wave three to probably bring us down back below 30 again. Um, yeah, I think that would be a reasonable target to hit that wave below. Uh, okay, so once we do confirm that we have wave two done, then we'd be looking for wave three to start. So the base case scenario is that wave two is done. And we got a spike down yesterday to suggest that we've uh, something impulsive maybe building to the downside again. So we had a pretty nice, um, not quite so uh, dramatic, uh, let's say, retracement of the previous extents of the fourth wave there. But we did uh, come down quite reasonably, and now we're bouncing today. So you would expect, obviously, some sort of bounce today. Um, it being Friday and all. Uh, so... If this is a 1-2 pattern, this should be a beginning of a larger 1-2 to begin wave 3. Uh, so uh, at this moment in time, I'm taking the most bearish, <laughs> you could probably say the most bearish outlook one could possibly take, uh, saying that we are now beginning a third wave down. So what do we need to happen from here? Well, we need to see this um, wave 2 high. We need to see that, that level hold. So that came in at... Uh, let's say 35,860. Um, interestingly enough, if we if we take the wave A high, or the extent of wave A, this is an ABC pattern up in wave 2. If we take the extent of wave A and we project it off the wave B low, that gives us a target for wave C at the 162% extension of 35,860. Or sorry, 35... Uh, what did it actually come in as? It came in at... 35,880, and we topped out at 35,860, so uh, not so bad, you know, that's uh, at least an indication. We did, you know, impulsively move lower off that again, so the question is, is this the beginning of wave three down? We'll know next week. If we continue lower, um, obviously we blast higher again, then I'm completely wrong, but uh, if we continue lower, trace out five waves, build a nice um, lower high here in wave two, then we would expect wave three to come our way. Um, over the, let's say, the following two weeks, let's say. Okay, let's move on off of the uh, stock market at the moment. I'll get back to the S&P later. Here is um, two counts. In, this is the alternate count for way, for gold. Um, and it, it is, it's a similar, it's a way for correction, no matter how you look at it. The question is, is it a wave four complex correction, or is it just a simple? Is it just a simple, straightforward uh, triangle wave four, uh, which should be completing pretty soon, and then we would head higher into wave five. Now, if this is a simple triangle wave four, then we will see um, the the low of wave E of four come in pretty soon, three waves down into wave E. And then we would rally again to break out above that, let's say that um, shackles of the 1850 level, uh, which has held the price for months and months now. Um, we should break out of that pretty easily in wave one of five, and probably maybe even to a new all-time high um, above 2077 there. Uh, that's for that's not for today. If we get down into the hourly count, I'll show you what I'm thinking about here for wave E. You got wave A down. We did get a wave D high. We got a nice sharp move down. I'm looking at that as wave A of E. So we're looking for an A, B, C pattern down in wave E. That's wave A down, done. Looks pretty corrective off that. Don't know if we're we're done for the wave B high. Uh, it was quite a, let's say, deep retracement in wave B. But I still think that's the best way to count it is um, corrective to the upside. So, if we're done here, uh, then we should see a return lower, let's say, even in towards the end of uh, today's session, uh, by, you know, my time, you know, by 3 or 4 o'clock Eastern US time, or 8 or 9 o'clock, 7 or 8 o'clock um, my time, uh, so GMT. Uh, so, do we get a reversal? Do we fall down into a third of wave C? before the end of this session. That's uh, kind of what I'll be looking for over the next couple hours. We'll see whether that happens or not. Um, it would be nice. It'd be nice to complete this wave E in a nice, you know, timely fashion rather than the previous, you know, long drawn out, 
road to nowhere kind of uh, patterns that we've been experiencing in gold. Um, the critical pattern, the critical high in gold is at 1853 high. If we break that wave D high, then it would suggest that, uh, the next leg up is underway. So let's see how that goes next week. Let's move on. This is crude oil. Here is the daily count in crude oil. I was looking for a fifth wave to top. Um, whether we've got that or not now is up to, well, it's still up for debate. Um, this would be a five wave pattern higher in wave C of B. And then once wave B completes, then we, we should see five waves down in wave C. So this is a long, long, large, drawn out uh, pattern that I'm following here. Uh, okay, so let's get in and see what's happened this week in the hourly count. Uh, possible impulsive decline. I'm not absolutely sold on it yet. Um, we're still kind of playing without playing around in the in the let's say the price territory of a second wave. So this is yet to be decided. We're very close, very close to breaking to a new let's say, high, uh, a, a new high for a lower high in wave two. So I'm not quite sure whether wave two is done yet. Um, it's been, let's say, tantalizing um, the action over the last couple of sessions because we've got so many, you know, sharp spikes to the downside. Uh, and again, today we've got a nice, uh, pretty sharp impulsive retracement of those um, downside moves. So we're ranging this week. It should be a correction. Um, we It's yet to be seen whether... Uh, we get any sort of confirmation we are done um, in wave 5 of C. You can see there, uh, wave 5 of C. If we are done in wave 5 of C, then we should see more downside next week. So let's see how that goes. Now let's move on. Uh, what will I do with the S&P next? Here we are. This is the S&P daily count. Uh, again, a 5 of 5 of 3 um, in place. Uh, on the four hour count, you can see tracking that kind of one two scenario uh, off the high. So five waves down wave one, ABC pattern up wave two. Excuse me, I'm going to make everyone yawn a little bit. We did pop just above the 62% retracement, and we have kind of, uh, let's say, created a double top there at this point. Um, reasonably impulsive moves lower as well. So uh, the question is are we done here? Uh, that's the question I'm, I'm having for the stock market this over the last week or so. Uh, so we did not didn't quite make to a new high in this weekly high. Um, we didn't quite make it to a new high within wave two. So uh, the scenario that I'm working with here is a possible um, truncated fifth wave. If it is a truncated fifth wave, well, you know, the alternate count for wave uh, C of two is still in play. Um, trunc truncated fifth wave does allow us to kind of count this um, real mishmash here uh, that happened earlier on, uh, late last week actually, as a corrective form. So I don't have to go, you know, butchering that into any sort of impulsive move lower. We'll see how that uh, transpires next week. But uh, interestingly enough, we do have another spike lower. We didn't get a break out of this corrective pattern just yet. We didn't get a break back into the wave A high. So I have I have a kind of a band of support marked here uh, between 44, 46 and 44, 19. So we break 44, 20 again, that should indicate that wave three of one is underway. So looking for five waves down again, always looking for five waves. This guy, <laughs> well, you know, that's what you're saying in the back of your head anyway. Okay, always looking for five waves down. So let's see if we do get that next week. And that's, let's say my, Base case scenario here, we'll see how it um, actually transpires. Uh, here's silver. This is the daily count on silver. Uh, you can see I'm tracking a very, um, oh, how would you say, an ominous uh, turn in the market this week or over the last week or so. Um, we could have wave A down done, expanded flat wave B done, and we could be moving down into a third wave of wave C. Um, this trend channel is suggesting somewhere down around 180 or 18 to complete this wave C. If we do get that, oh well, uh, we may even go even further. I'm not 100% sure on that. 
we may go further in wave C of two. I mean, we could fall, go back. We could fall back to fifteen again um, if we, if wave C really does take uh, take hold of this action. You know, we get kind of like a, a capitulation um, in the longs, and we just you know people start piling in short again. I don't think we'll see a, a test of the lows again. I'd still think that this is a second wave higher low that's building. Uh, although I am kind of short term bearish, I do expect long term that we will see a massive appreciation in silver. Okay, let's move on to the four hour count. There's not much to show there. Daily count. Okay, we did get a spike lower yesterday, uh, or actually this early this morning. Um, looking at one two again, uh, we've got a one two of C complete. Looking for a one two of wave three of C. Uh, if this happens, then we should see declines early next week. We don't have to see a break to a new low in wave one, but we do need to see a lower high build in wave two. And then uh, we would look for an acceleration lower uh, into wave three of C. And that's the outlook for next week. Let's see if we build another lower high in silver. Uh, let's go to Bitcoin. I'm going to daily count of Bitcoin. This is what I've been working with in Bitcoin over the last significant number of months, I suppose. Um, why, why won't my chart go down? It won't. Okay, so it's an ABC pattern. Wave B broke out to a new high in three waves. So we have an ABC pattern up in wave B. And so far, we could be working on a 1 2 1 2 pattern. I'm not entirely sure about that. If it is the case, then we are already running down in wave C, or sorry, wave 3 of C. So, uh, in <clears throat> that, it does, that sounds a little bit scary for, um, Bitcoin, uh, because this pattern does suggest somewhere down around, you know, 11, maybe 10, 10,000 again <laughs> in wave C. And this could, like, this could completely break the market. It could even be outlawed after this. So watch out and don't say, don't tell me that they don't want to do it because you know well that they do. Uh, okay, so and they're just looking for the opportunity. I mean, people will be uh, crying for it to be outlawed at that point um so here's the one two scenario one two one two scenario down into wave three of c so we'll see looking actually for next week we're looking for a third of a third pattern in the hourly count you can see this is the uh correction higher in wave two that i'm working with or a b c up in wave two uh, again another kind of punch to the downside yesterday I'm not sure if this is wave one of to begin a third wave down, so um, that will be, let's say, where I'll be focused next week. If we get five waves down again, uh, especially if we start breaking below um, this corrective higher low here in 36, 36200, we break below 36200 again, that's wave B wiped out um, or retraced, and then that would be a pretty good indicator that wave three is underway. Okay, let's move on. I'm going to go to the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ here, there's the hour count. I'll go for the four hour count in NASDAQ. Uh, as you can see, a you could you could view this two ways. We did come down to the previous fourth wave, and so far, so far I think we've got three waves down complete. Now, the bulls among us would say that this is obviously just a retracement, it's just a correction back into the previous fourth wave, and the bounce off that has you know, indicated that we are ready to rally again. Okay, I'll give you that. We could have a one or an ABC pattern down. But this could also be a fourth wave working down into a fifth wave. So if we go down into the hourly count here, you can see that I've got the three waves up in wave four. We've got a one, two pattern in wave five. So I am looking for further downside next week to complete five waves down in the NASDAQ, five waves down in wave one. Um, uh, is that it? Yes, that's it. Okay. So, uh, like I said earlier, get over to the website and check out um, bowwaves.org and uh, we should, you should be able to uh, take a look at um, the prices. Uh, I, I do have a little bit of a problem with, with the website now, but I'm working on it. <laughs> okay, so, tell the website, if you're interested in nightly Elliott Wave analysis, um, or drop me a line, you know, we'll uh, We'll chat. Um, uh, if you do want nightly updates, I'll be updating again later on tonight. So 
hop on there, um, get yourself a membership, and you'll see that and everyone after that as well. Um, okay, uh, let's see. This is what I always end with. The I give you the bad news in the markets, as far as I see it, and I give you uh, the good news of salvation. So, uh, where do you stand in the eternal war, or not the eternal war, the, that's the cataclysmic war between good and evil? So that's what this is all about. You know, where do you stand? Where does your allegiance stand? And that's really what God will judge you on when he sees you, when you die and you come face to face with your creator. And he's going to recognize you as one of his troops or he's going to recognize you as one of the enemy. And as Jesus said, if you're not for me, you're against me. So the question is, you know, have you received that free gift of salvation to become part of that army, that end time army? Uh, that's the way I view it anyway. This is a spiritual war and it's fast turning into a kinetic war. And I think it will be a kinetic war uh, pretty soon. There's at least three, if not four wars that are brewing and just waiting to, uh, waiting for the first trigger pull. And I think that's coming pretty soon. So, if I were you, maybe have a look at what Jesus said, because he did promise you eternal life. No matter what happened to you in this life, he promised you eternal life if you if you pledge allegiance to him. So how do you do that? You admit you're a sinner. You believe that Jesus is God's son. He died on the cross for you and rose up on the third day. And you confess that he's the Lord of your life. And if he is your Lord, then you are on his side. A-okay? okay that's the gospel. It's good news. It's, that's it. It's not religion. It's not anything else. Anyone can do this. Anyone can look into it. There's very few places on planet Earth where this is um, that you're going to get in trouble for doing this. So uh, I would simply ask you to at least consider it because I know one thing. You know, I may not, not, not I may not know the future entirely, but I do know one thing is certain in your life, and that means that is going to die. So. You know, I'm sorry to break the bad news to you. Maybe you should get on the right side before you do. Okay. That's it. God's blessings to you all. I'll see you on the website later if you come and join. And if not, I'll see you next week in YouTube land. Bye-bye.